Hello everyone, welcome back to Agronomy Moment. I thought I would, uh, after taking a week off or a week's break on this podcast, I thought I would share a few things that have been coming up and possibly may potentially come up here as we go over the next while in our crops and fields. And so received an email from Scott Dickey this morning on some thoughts on agronomy, and I thought it would be worth sharing, something to be on a lookout for. Um, one of those that I was thinking about before I got started into his email is um, application or top dressing of nitrogen on corn. And I will include a link to an article I wrote last year in 2019 that seemed to be similar situation that we're facing right now where last year we had a wet spring, as we all know, and we lost nitrogen and kind of were sitting in similar shoes this year. I don't think quite as, maybe not quite as much losses overall, but still a lot of the same ideas. And I thought I, I will include that link in the podcast notes. Um, so you can feel free to read that if you uh, were wanting to see what kind of options you might have this spring on top dressing. Um, one of the things I wanted to go over here is the email that Scott sent this morning. It relates to this storm that's moving in possibly tomorrow or tonight. We may not receive much on it. Western Missouri definitely does not have as much risk as central Missouri as far as rainfall totals. Um, but the thing that the storm may bring with it is some baggage that Scott Dickey was talking about, and that is southern rust. It seems awful early to receive diseases like this. However, in Louisiana, southern rust is being reported already. The inoculum is alive and well there, and these storms are known for bringing that with them. So that's something to be on the watch out as we go forward over the next, it may take it a week or 10 days. We're not going to see this right away. But still, we, I just thought it would be well worth our time to keep our eyes open in the fields as we go over the next several weeks and we approach that tassel time to make sure southern rust is not occurring in our fields. This is a disease that can move very quickly. It takes roughly about seven days for it to cycle. And it, ex it literally explodes very quickly. And so with that, I'm going to go to a video that Bex has put out by an agronomist in Indiana, Steve Gauck. Thanks to him, he has some pointers on how to identify it and the difference between it and the common rust of which it is similar. And so here is this video by Steve. Hello, this is Steve Gauck, agronomist with Bex Hybrids in Southern Indiana. And today I wanna to talk a little bit about Southern versus common rust. Last year in 2016, we had a bad outbreak of southern rust that did cause some yield loss in a lot of areas. And this year we're seeing another influx of it come north into southern Indiana. I want to talk about how to identify it, uh, maybe some possibilities on spraying it, and even some lookalikes and take versus common rust. So common rust is what I've been seeing mainly this year out in a lot of cornfields. And I've got a couple leaves here. As you can see the common rust it's more of a longer lesion it's raised it's normally dark brown the one big telltale sign is as you flip over a leaf you will notice there's raised pustules on the bottom also a little harder to rub off uh, and usually end up with uh, a little bit of a brown tint to your fingers after you've rubbed on it common rust is is have we've had a larger outbreak than normal this year but it's not known to be yield robbing. There is some hybrid differences, but it's not gonna be one of those things I'm going to make a spray application just for it. Now we've been hot and humid this summer and humidity and the moisture creates a good breeding ground for diseases. So your gray leaf spot and these rust are, are running rampant in a lot of places. So let's take a look after we've looked at the common rust we're going to jump over here and look at a leaf with some severe infestation of southern rust. Now you'll notice southern rust is much smaller lesions. Uh, they're more orange. When you rub your finger across them, you turn orange. So that's kind of a telltale sign. As you flip it over, you can see the disease comes through the leaf, but there's nothing that's going to rub off. 
You can even see here where even southern rust has infected the stock. So the, the question then becomes, when do you spray for southern rust if you've identified it? So southern rust can move quickly. It could kill a corn plant in 10 to 14 days if conditions are right. So that's 80 degree temperature plus, that's some high humidities, that storms have come out of the south. So I wanna look a little bit at, okay, what growth stage are you in? So you can see this corn here is at brown silk. We're past brown silk for the most part in this field. And we're not quite to the milk stage here as we look at these fields, but we're getting closer uh, from that standpoint. So we're milk, uh, not quite to dough stage. So we gotta make a decision here. We've got another probably four weeks, depending on the weather before this corn uh, is mature to black layer. Most fungicides that we see out there the quilted cells, Stratego yield, things like that are very good on the rust, but you're only gonna get maybe two weeks residual out of those. New product out in the market called Triva Pro. We're probably looking at more around that four weeks. Some people even say maybe even five. So if I'm just getting done with the silking and tasseling, the Triva Pro may be more of an approach I would take to get longer season residual. The quilted cells, things like that, if I'm at milk stage, and have a heavy infestation would be a product I would probably take a look at. If you did spray a, a product at VT, our PFR proven data shows that fungicide applications at VT are most profitable. Uh, it may not hold if we have a late heavy infestation of southern rust. So just because you sprayed doesn't mean maybe you're in the clear. So you'll need to continue scouting. The other thing is you're scouting, you need to keep an eye on. We've seen a lot of this. This is Physoderma brown spot. And we've seen it, it's, it's where a lot of cases, especially water got over top of plants in the whirls early in the season, caused some infestation, some heavy rain splashing soil up on the plants. But I've seen more of this than, than I have ever seen out in fields and nothing there, no raised pustules, nothing rubs off. So make sure you're identifying it properly because the Physoderma brown spot also does not cause any yield loss and no need to spray for it. So proper identification is key. If you have questions or want a good identification, send a plant sample to your local university. Uh, for us, it's Purdue. The Plant Pest Diagnostic Lab does a great job of turning those back out and confirming whether or not they're southern rust. So again, right now today, it's cool this morning. It's about 72 degrees out here in the field. So rust isn't spreading. So we're gonna get cool over the weekend. I wanna kind of hold off a little bit, maybe before I make an application and see if we start to warm up and we see an influx of, uh, of disease start coming again. Also make sure you know your corn hybrids. Some hybrids have some better tolerance. 6127 has seemed to have shown some pretty good tolerance to Southern rust. 5828, some pretty good tolerance. But our more racehorse hybrids like 6158 are ones that are on my watch list for southern rust. So know your hybrids, know what growth stage they're at, know the yield potential of the field. If it's got a lot of good yield potential, we need to protect this upper canopy and keep it clean. So right now the southern rust mainly seems to be down in the canopy, uh, but we want to make sure we're keeping this upper canopy clean, get through grain fill. So hopefully that helps distinguish a little bit between what we see here as southern rust versus our common rust. But if you have questions, talk to your local Beck Seed Advisor or give me a ring and be glad to help you out. Thanks and have a great day. Thank you to Bex and Steve for that video, and that pretty much concludes this brief podcast today, um, episode 9. Uh, we did skip a week, and due to the business of schedule, and nothing was pressing. Um, I want to give a special thanks to Scott Dickey as well for his email and alerting us to some of the potential risks coming up that we can be on the watch out for. And also, we hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, give us a five-star review. This really does help us. You can find us on our website or on your favorite podcast listing app. My favorites are Apple Podcasts and Podbean. 
Sounds like BeanPod just turned it around. It should be noted that all copyright content in this podcast have been acquired through special permissions and licensing from the proper artists. We just ask that you share the links to this podcast on all the broadcasting platforms that are found. Feel free to reach out anytime with questions, feedback, or any concerns you might have. This is a production of Top Ag Media. Wendell Cohen was a producer. I'm your show host, Wendell Cohen. Cheers to all of you. Until next time.